Everyone, this is George Kroos with a special episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And maybe not, and maybe it's not special, to be honest with you. Uh, I just wanted to do a solo podcast. I actually haven't done this in a while unless it was about a book that I'm reading. But I just want to do some reflections. And typically I record these podcasts way far ahead. I, I'm a very organized person. And I've been planning to record this for a while, about three things I've learned this year. And it is uh, my birthday coming up in a few days once you hear this. It is April 6th when I'm recording this and my birthday is on April 12th. And I just wanted to kind of think about some of the things that really kind of stuck with me this year. And there's no theme music except for maybe a little Mindset Monday. Definitely a little Mindset Monday music. But yeah, I just wanted to sit and reflect and think about some things that really resonate with me this year, huge changes in my life. My family and I, we moved, um, as you all know, across uh, North America from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada to Orlando, Florida. And there's been some challenges for sure, as there would be with any massive change in, li in life. But I think there's been some really great things about this. And I wanted just to kind of look back and what are some things that really stuck with me what are some of the lessons I picked up this year and I want to share with you all uh, because I, I think it's really not only helpful hopefully to somebody listening in this space right now but helpful to me to kind of articulate some of the things that I've taken away so I wrote down three things that really stuck with me and I've been trying to focus on and maybe refocus on and, I, and I'll get to that last but the first one I thought about is this one I wrote this down what you complain about today, you might miss tomorrow. And a little story about that statement and why it actually matters. In fact, it was just this morning. I get to up um, earlier than everyone else in my family, and I always take the dogs for a walk. And it's not something I used to do until I actually moved here. And partly, it's way easier to walk dogs when the weather's nice uh, pretty much every single day. Uh, when you don't have to put on snow boots and things like that. And I kind of took for granted how much my dogs appreciated walks. Uh, and it's something I know that, uh, you know, they don't tell me that. You can tell by their, their wagging tail. They look forward to so much in the morning. And sometimes it's a pain to do it, but I know how much they love it. And it makes me happy. And it gives me some just time to catch my breath in the morning, just to kind of plan for the day. And I really love doing this. And typically, my daughter, Clea, she's an early riser. She gets up as soon as I get back uh, from the walk. And one of the jobs that she's taken on in the house, and she's six years old, we're starting to give her some more chores, things to do, and uh, take some responsibilities, is one of the things that she actually asked to do as a responsibility was to pick up the dog poop <laughs> in the yard every day. And... At first, she was, you know, really appreciative of it. And to have that responsibility contributing. But just like anything, things can become monotonous. And you maybe kind of get fed up with it. So typically, I'll see her in the morning and I'll say, hey, remember, you got to pick up the, the poop. You got to pick this up. Do it right away. Get it over with. And then you can do whatever, you know, the rest of the day is going to be much better if you get over. But if you put it off, it's going to be harder. And that's just kind of how my mentality is. I try to do the hard stuff first in the morning and then get to the things that I love and really appreciate because it just, I don't know, maybe I just kind of connect it to it's a reward. And maybe that's not the best way to look at it, but it, it really has helped me. But today I, I said, hey, she sat down. She started doing some coloring. She's very independent in the morning. I said, why don't you uh, get your job done right away? And then I kind of heard her muttering as she walked out of the house. She's like, I'm so sick of doing this every single day. So I said, whoa, 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 come here. So she actually came and I said, I want you to really think about this because I know we all have to do jobs that we don't like and I have to do jobs that I don't like every single day. And I know it's not always fun, but I want you to really think about what is the alternative? If you actually didn't have to pick up dog poop every day, what would be the reason that there would be no more poop outside? And I know this is kind of like I'm using the term poop lots in a podcast, but I think we're all grown ups. <laughs> we can handle the word poop. 
but uh, she she kind of realized what I was saying, and she said, "Well, that's probably because the dogs aren't here." And I said, "Would you rather the dogs not be here, or would you rather pick up poop every day?" And she's like, "I'd rather pick up poop every day." And I said, "You know how much the dogs mean to me, and we love the dogs, and I've had Odom since he was a little puppy, and he's getting older and stuff like that too." And and then when she realized that the alternative to not picking up poop every day is the dogs might not be here anymore. And I know it might be like a grim lesson, but I think it applies to so many things in our lives, whether it's our families that sometimes you get annoyed when they want us to call. But the alternative, if I could, you know, talk to my dad one more time, I would take that in a second and really kind of think about this. And so really kind of thinking that sometimes the things that are really hard, the things that might be annoying, you're going to miss them. And I think the reason I could give this lesson to my daughter, Clea, is I've really tried to embrace us as a parent. There's a lot of times where my kids annoy me, <laughs> just like everyone's kids annoy them, right? And a lot more times now, I kind of laugh and smile because I'm going to miss being annoyed one day. Uh, Kalia is getting bigger and she's harder to pick up and I'll still pick her up and she loves it. But one day, I don't know if I will be able to. And, you know, and that, that to me is really important that we have to kind of take a step back and ask ourselves if this wasn't happening this more, this thing that's annoying me, what would that look like instead? And I know that it's easy to complain about things. It's easy to get frustrated, but sometimes thinking of the alternative and why you might not have to do something uh, is a a dose of reality that we need. And I know I need it sometimes and I'm I'm grateful. My daughter Clea um, took that lesson to heart this morning because it, it did change her mood. And not only did she go do what she had to do, I saw her give a little extra love uh, to the dogs because they are getting up there in age and um, they are, someone that you know they are as much as I'm one of those dog guys they're part of my family so it is really important and so the second lesson uh, I want to share with you and it's something that I have really embraced this year is make it your business to meet people and what what does that mean why am I bringing this up Uh, when I moved here strangely enough I became friends with the person um we bought the house from, which is kind of weird. That does that, how often does that happen? And we just kind of connected, became friends. We hang out every now and then. And he's, he's a very accomplished person. He's done some incredible things. And I kind of, I, I, like, I don't kind of, I, I do look up to him. He's done some incredible things. And I always ask him for advice and listen to him. And we were out for lunch one day and he's new to the area as well couple years ahead of me obviously uh, since we bought the house from him he already lived here and he moved to another place that's uh, close by and we go for lunch we go here and he just knew everybody and it was really weird because he's brand new here and I said to him how do you know all these people like it's amazing how do you know all these people and he said when I moved here I made it my business to meet these people and he said that, but he said that to me, we went out for lunch before we had even moved here. And that really kind of struck me because I can be pretty isolating to myself. Uh, I, uh, as much as I love sharing, you know, have conversations with people, keynoting events and being around tons of people, I guess sometimes because of that, I can, you know, isolate myself that I, I get a little bit overwhelmed um, being around Uh, people all the time and sometimes just want to be alone read a book and I think that's that's a normal thing but when he said that I I wanted to kind of change how I was because I probably know more people here um, in Orlando and not even being here a year than I met um, outside of work um, in Edmonton 10 years I lived there which is strange but it isn't because I made it my business to meet people and if you've been following me over the last year, one of my favorite things is I go to Orlando Magic Games and just just love that experience, just love it. And I remember on the very first night, I, I, I got season tickets. And I was so excited. 
And I thought about this. There's a, an usher there. His name is Ron. And I went up to Ron, showed him my tickets. I didn't know his name was Ron. I said, hey, my name's George. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this straight up. I just bought season tickets. You and I are going to be best friends this year. You're going to see me all the time. And I just wanted to introduce myself. And he said, oh, I'm Ron. I said, and I love it. And Ron and I, uh, and this is just one of the awesome people I've met here. Ron and I, every single game, I'll walk up at half. We'll kind of talk about this. And he's so welcoming to people that I bring to the game. He's so nice to me. And one of the things that really meant a lot to me was I brought my mom to, uh, to her first couple of basketball games. She's never been to an NBA game. She's 86 years old. And to see her at a basketball game was, was absolutely amazing. It was like a dream come true for her. And again, don't like we take these things for granted. It's, it's kind of normal to me now because I've gone to so many games over my lifetime, uh, which because I'm such a fanatic, but my mom is too. She really loved basketball. Uh, she would often watch me when I was in high school. And why I bring this up is Ron knew me. I made a connection with him. And when I said, hey, Ron, this is my mom. The treatment that not only him, but all the people he connects with, all the people he knows, gave to my mom, made me feel really special because they made my mom feel really special. And I know um, he took, he appreciated that because of how I went on my way to connect with him. And that really matters to me. That really matters. And uh, going to those games, I've met so many people kind of being in this area, uh, reaching out to people that you see online, things like that. It's it's something I've really tried to be cognizant of because it just makes it a better experience and you, you make these connections. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people I've reached out to who've never reached out to me back. And I get that. And people are busy and might not know me, but more often than not, I've, I've made some really good connections with people and um, gone on my way to connect with them, not just be someone that passes by, but, you know, make sure that I know people's names, make sure that I connect with people. And it's just been awesome. And, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that I've met so many incredible people um, during my time here, but I, I've made it my business to do that. And that's something I, I learned from a friend of mine that I met since we moved here and it's really helped me. And it's something I hope to continue to grow and get better. Cause I can be kind of, it was weirdly enough as someone who's just talking on a camera and just sharing with the world, I can be shy in person and, and I get that. And so the last lesson um, I want to share with you, and this is one that I've kind of re-embraced <laughs> is, and you know, I used to do this a lot more than, uh, I have in, in the past couple of years, but I've started to do it again is to advocate for yourself. And what do I mean by that? When I first moved to uh, Parkland school division, that's the last, um, school division that I worked with on contract for, uh, a, a long period of time. That's where I became a teacher or, or I didn't become, that's where I started teaching. And then I became a vice principal and a principal. And I worked in central office. I had a really great time. There's a lot of great people uh, that I've met. And I'm still connected with uh, through that time. And on my very first day, I remember they had welcomed new teachers. And it was really an incredible experience because when they were welcoming these new teachers, the superintendents were there. And like, not just the superintendent, but there's like associate superintendents, deputy superintendents, all these people. And I really appreciated that because I had spent several years in another school district. I never met the superintendent ever. They would not know me from a hole in the ground. Yet on my very first day at this school division, I met the superintendent and I met all the associate superintendents, which was incredible to me. Um, it was just it tells you something about the culture of that place and, and why it really matters. And so there was one associate superintendent and I kind of got the, the feeling that he was um, doing stuff with technology integration, things like this. And I was on a temporary contract and I remember saying, I, I kind of pulled him aside. I said, hey, can I talk to you for a second? He said, absolutely. I said, hey, I know that you're doing a lot of technology stuff. Just so you know, uh, I actually did a lot of stuff with technology, technology integration in um, my own, my last school district. And if there's any way that I can help you, if there's any w uh, services I could provide um, to the school division outside of my role as a teacher, I would love to do that. 
so please keep me in mind because I would love to kind of help if you need me to volunteer, to lead some sessions, things like that. And I think he was kind of shocked that I would just went on my way and like basically, you know, offered up my time. But I, I, had, I had committed that when I went there that I was going to recreate myself. And I think every time we have a new opportunity, we have an opportunity to recreate who we are, which kind of I'm talking about, to be honest with you, as I'm listening to myself share about this. When I moved here, I wanted to say like, what, what am I going to do different here that's going to create new opportunities for me that I wasn't doing in my last place? It's not about you just show up and all of a sudden you, you always do the same thing, but opportunities start hitting you. You have to rebuild and recreate yourself. And I, I did that. And immediately, probably within a week, he had contacted me about something that they were wanting to do. And he said, he asked my advice, would I be able to lead it? And that initiative that I took to advocate for myself opened up doors so quickly in that space that I went from going there as kind of like, I'm going to give teaching one more year because I'm, I'm kind of sick of this to I became an assistant principal by, by the end of the year principal within two years and then central office after that because I was willing to put myself out there now in the last few years I I don't know what it is but I've I've kind of you know I I'm proud of the work that I've done but I kind of just you know just assumed people known but I've been more comfortable saying like hey you know I'm really proud of the work that I do I'd love to work with your district. I'd love to do this. And I've noticed that once I started doing that, um, a lot more opportunities started opening up for me. And it wasn't that I'm saying I'm the best, <laughs> everyone else is worse than me or like that. But I think sometimes um, we just assume people know our strengths, our passions, the gifts that we can bring. And then they don't call on us. And it's like, sometimes you got to put the idea in your head. And I know this, that, um, not everyone will advocate for you. Some people will, some people won't. But I think you, we always have to learn to advocate for ourselves. This is something that, you know, some adults get really weird about, and that's fine. Get weird about it. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. Because if you get weird about it, would you get weird about saying that to my daughter? Because if you, if, you, if you would, I don't want you around my kid. I don't want you saying, no, 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 like just cower and you know hope for the best i watch educators do this all the time telling their kids they need to you know champion themselves and be an advocate and share their voice of the world but then i watch a lot of those same educators complain when adults do that and what once we hit a certain age we, sh we shouldn't do that anymore and so i've i, I just kind of you know when i say don't care i i'm from <laughs> I, I don't care because i think part of it is the reason I kind of maybe, you know, pulled back a little bit was because I was so concerned about people that were crapping on people and like, oh, you're so self-promotional and not to me, but to other people. And then a lot of times uh, other people see that and then they, they lessen themselves because they're so scared of being criticized. They're so scared of doing that. And here's the deal. People will criticize you if you're doing great things that will happen because not necessarily because they have a valid criticism, but sometimes it makes them feel insecure. And I've seen this with teachers. I've, I've worked with teachers who have said this to me. I'm a little bit nervous about trying this new thing. Cause if it works, it's going to make the teacher across the hall feel bad. And I'm like, who cares if you're helping kids, if you're doing something great, do not hold yourself back because you're, you're worried it's going to make someone else feel insecure. It is more on them to elevate themselves than it is on you to lower your, your self expectations. That to me is really important. We do this all the time. And so I've just kind of said, Hey, I'm going to advocate for myself. I believe in the work that I do. I believe in myself. And it's not that I don't have faults. Of course I do just like everyone else, but we share the same thing with our kids. We share the same things with the people that we appreciate. So we have to share that with ourselves. So those are three things I picked up this year. And so I'll, I'll share them again. First one is what you complain about today, you might miss tomorrow. So just take moments to appreciate some of the crappy tasks <laughs> as the story, picking up poop, the crappy tasks, because sometimes if we don't have them, you know, I, I, I'll give you an example 
you know, just kind of building on this. People, I've I've done conferences, keynote, and I've signed hundreds and hundreds of books. And, you know, as, it, you know, more and more books come in and I sign them, people say to me, oh, you must be sick of doing this. I say, I would, I would be much more bothered if nobody wanted to buy my book or sign it. I, I'll take signing a million books over signing zero any day. That's, that's one of the things that I've tried to embody myself. Um, the second one is to make it your business to meet new people. I think when we network, there's connections we create. We can you know provide opportunities that didn't exist if we weren't willing to make them. And then the last one is to advocate for yourself. You are doing great things. Don't assume everyone knows. Share those things. Be proud of yourself the same way we tell our kids to advocate and share their voice to the world. So those are three big things that I've, you know, really kind of reflected back on um, this year that really stuck out to me. I hope someone out there listening, uh, it will benefit. Uh, And if you made it this far, I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care. Bye-bye.